It's time for another totally legitimate scroller box. Never mind the fact that this box is already open and looks a little worse for wear. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. It's time for another no box art box and today we are doing the October 2021 scroller box. If you are unfamiliar with the no box art box challenge, this is a challenge I introduced to YouTube back in 2018. What I have done is I have looked up the contents of the new, the latest scroller box, October 2021, and we're going to replicate it. We're going to do the challenge in the box. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about the contents. There are so many reasons why you would do the No Box Art Box Challenge. You can do it to test drive these services, figure out if they would be worth it for you before you actually spend the money. You can use it to experience more different boxes than you can afford to get. You can use it to experience past boxes that already shipped and you can't order the back stock anymore. That's why I actually started the challenge. You can use it because you used to subscribe and you have way too many supplies now and it's it's just not worth it anymore, but you miss the challenge, which is why I still do it. So many reasons to try it. You can even use it to re-experience the challenge of a box you got in the past. The steps to this challenge are very simple. Step one, pick an art or craft supply subscription box, any of them. Pick a past month that already shipped and look up what was in the box. Step two, match what was in the box using supplies you already own. Don't go shopping specifically to match a box, just use what you've already got. Exact matches to the items in the box are fine as long as you're not using this challenge to re-experience a box you actually got in the past, in which case I'm going to ask you to use the next closest match in your collection if at all possible just to, you know, make it a challenge. Step three, make art. If the box had a challenge prompt or a theme, try to stick to that and only add missing essentials such as a pencil or a piece of paper. You don't have to do the exact boxes I'm doing, you can do any box, but please do share them anywhere you normally post your art share them on social media, share them here on YouTube. Use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox so that we can all find them. And if you do a YouTube video, please do feel free to send me a link so that I can add you to the master playlist for this challenge. As per usual with all of my ArtBox videos, I'm going to run through what was in the box first and then I will talk about the piece I've created, decisions I made, how I feel about the box, etc. I will be telling you the suggested retail price from the manufacturer. ScrawlerBox is a UK service so I will be mentioning the RRP in pounds sterling, but I will have conversions in the description box down below to US dollars and Canadian dollars. And I will go ahead and do some research on major online retailers for all three of those currency regions. And if at all possible, I will tell you what these items currently cost right now if you were to buy them open stock for yourself. I will then in the description go ahead and do the calculations based on subscribing one box at a time, one month at a time, three months, six months, whatever. I will give you the RRP total minus your subscription cost, the real world total minus your subscription cost, and you can figure out whether or not this box would have been worth it for you depending on what tier you're subscribed at, where you're subscribing from, and just whether or not you like these supplies. So let's get into it. This is the year's coveted alcohol marker box. They always do at least one, and this is the second time that I have seen them send Copic. I believe they sent it once before I subscribed in 2018, but since I first subscribed in 2018, this is only the second time I've seen Copics, and this time they sent three full-size sketch markers, which is the coveted one that everybody really wants, but not everybody can afford to get. Normally when I'm doing my research to find RRP in pound sterling, I'm going to do that on Jackson's art. They don't sell the sketch size open stock, or at least they didn't last time I looked, so I'm just going straight to Dick Blick and then doing a currency conversion. According to the list price, not the current sale price, but the list price on Dick Blick converted to pound sterling, the RRP that would be listed on the menu card in this month's scholar box for a sketch marker is 5.82 each. And that works out to 17 pounds 46 for the three markers. That is already the one month at a time subscription cost for the box. You're just considering the shipping price of the box after that if you're only looking at the RRP total for the box. So Copic sketch markers. All Copic markers are an alcohol-based ink. This means they blend beautifully. They are capable of laying down fairly flat solid colors if you use the correct techniques and they're not going to eat up the page because they're not water-based. The sketch and chow markers that Copic offers have the coveted brush nib. The original has a bullet nib instead 
and all of these markers on the opposite end do have a chisel nib or a broad nib, if you will. Copic has long since been the industry leader for alcohol-based illustration markers, not only because they have one of the largest color ranges and they have the best selection in terms of very pale, very muted, very pastel shades, they also offer refill inks and replacement nibs for all of their markers, all of their colors, and all of their products are the same colors across the different product lines. So buying a single marker is going to last you years and years and years and years at a much cheaper cost than replacing the whole marker every time the marker runs dry. They sent BG15 Aqua, Y02 Canary Yellow, and R46 Strong Red. I only have one of these three exact colors. I am using my Copic Chow version of the BG15 Aqua marker. In place of the YO2 Canary Yellow, I am going to use a Spectra AD alcohol brush marker in Canary Yellow. This is color code 014 and I do believe that the Spectra AD brush markers are the same as the Blick Studio markers, the store brand from Dick Blick. So if you were to get the Spectra AD markers and you wanted to refill them and extend the life of your marker, you could buy the refill ink from Blick Studio markers. The color names and numbers are exactly the same. The barrels look the same, they're just a different color depending on which region of the world you bought your Spectra AD markers in. Some of them are black, some of them are white. In place of the R46 Strong Red, I am going to use a Copic Sketch marker, so if you're not familiar with the differences of Copic Sketch versus Copic Chow, you can just look on screen, look at the markers I'm using. I am going to use R27, which is Carmine Red, so this is going to be a little bit softer of a red, a little bit more on the pinky side, but it's very, very similar in color. The way the numbering works on the Copic markers, if you're not familiar, the letter is the color family. So R is the reds, BG is the blue greens, Y is the yellows, and then you have these numbers. There's a two digit number. The first number, the tens column, that is the blending family. So everything in that family will be roughly the same undertone. They're just going to be darker and lighter shades of the same color. So when you blend them together, they are going to go together perfectly. You're not going to find that something is more cool or more warm or more a purpley undertone than the color you picked next to it. And the last number, the ones column, that is just your zero to nine value scale. So I am using R27 Cadmium Red. Sorry, I believe I said Carmine Red before. This is Cadmium Red. A perfect transitional blend would be with another R2 blank number. So an R24, an R25, that kind of thing. That would make a perfect blend. I'm going to show you on screen up in the corner, I will blend R27 Cadmium Red with R24 Prawn. I really do love Copic markers. They are truly one of the best in the industry. The Spectra ADs are really good too. I really like these and I am very glad that Blick Studio has appears to be the same marker, appears to have the refill inks. I just wish that it wasn't so expensive for a Canadian to order that across the border. As a Canadian, if I can't order from a Canadian company, I will order overseas from a UK company because for some reason, when I have big art supply packages coming in from Jackson's, that just goes straight in my community mailbox. Nobody bats an eye at it and it's fine. When I order markers and stuff like that from American companies and they come up across that land border, they go through an x-ray machine or somebody who doesn't know what they're doing looks at the shipping label and they go, oh, that's cosmetics. Let's put an import tax on it. Or, oh, you can get markers here in Canada. Why are you buying it in the States? Let's put an import tax on it. Every single time, it's always way more expensive for me to order from the States, even if the initial sale price is better from a place like Dickbook. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> Other favorites I have for brush markers in the alcohol markers. I really like the Windsor Newton Pro Marker brush markers. I also really like the Ohuhu brush markers. The Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers are fairly nice too. I do wish they had a chisel nib instead of the bullet nib on the other end. They're one of the few that does the brush and bullet combination. Some people really like that combination. Some people 
think they would really like that combination until they get to it. I would just rather have the chisel if I'm only going to have one option. I even sometimes prefer the chisel over the brush. You can do a lot of the same techniques with the chisel and the chisel is going to make much straighter lines, much bolder marks, and cover a wider area than the bullet nib. Moving on, that took too long. Other items in the box. We have a fine liner from Unipin. This is the Unipin Fine Liner Water and Fade Proof Pigment Ink Liner. Everybody got a black pen in the size 0.3. This is a Japanese style metal clad fine liner nib and it produces a 0.3 millimeter line. According to Jackson's, the RRP in pound sterling is two pounds 49. These are pigment based, waterproof, fade proof, fine liners, just like all of the other fine liner leaders like Copix Multi Liner, Sakura's Micron, all of those kind of pens. Next up is the pencil. We are being offered the Faber-Castell Grip Pencil in Leadweight 2B. Jackson's carries several of Faber-Castell's Grip Line products, but not the pencils, so I have looked it up on Dicklick and converted from USD. The RRP, according to this, should be £1.46. This appears to be just their basic graphite pencil, I believe equivalent with their Gold Faber line, in a triangular grey barrel with dot grips all over the sides to make it really easy and ergonomic to hold. I have many Faber-Castell pencils. I do not have the grip line, so I'm just using my original Artist Quality Pro Castell 9000 Faber-Castell pencil in 2B. Next is the eraser. Once again, Faber-Castell. This is the Needable Art Eraser. It's your standard gray putty eraser. This one comes in a plastic storage box, and according to Jackson's, the RRP, which is also their current price, it's not reduced there, £2.27. Most grey putty erasers are created equal, so I am going to use one that I currently have open in its own plastic carrier box. This one is by Lyra of Germany, so neighboring company equivalent. And last but not least, the paper. Scrawlerbox sent a custom 10 sheet A5 pad of marker paper. I could not see clearly in anybody's photo what the maker of the paper is, but for over a year now, all of their exclusive custom papers have been made by Claire Fontaine. So this is undoubtedly going to be their gold line marker paper. According to Jackson's, the A4 size, so the next size up, your standard writing paper size, that in a 50 sheet pad is seven pounds 52 retail price. We're being sent a smaller A5 size. We're also only being sent 10 sheets. So I'm going to consult older menu cards for an idea. In March, 2020, we were sent a Claire Fontaine Goldline A5 layout pad and that had an RRP of two pounds 20. And in May, 2021, we received a Goldline A5 cartridge pad that had an RRP of three pounds 25 we're going to split the difference. We're going to estimate this at £2.99. And just in case I didn't mention it yet, normally the gold line is 70 GSM. I do believe in the photos I have seen on Instagram, the custom pad is listed as 75 GSM. That could be an error. I know there were other errors made with that pad. Apparently a lot of customers got an email that the pad was glued upside down and therefore the coated side was the wrong way up. Marker paper is tricky that way. I am going to use my Transo type marker paper. This is going to be exactly the same thing. If you ever buy Copic branded paper, it is identical to the Transo type. They just private label it. This is 70 GSM bleed proof marker paper. I have an A4 pad, so I am going to cut a sheet in half and then I will have the A5 that everybody with the legitimate boxes has. The thing you need to know about the thin lightweight marker paper like this that is coated, the back side of the paper is coated to prevent bleed bleeding and feathering. If you accidentally color on the wrong side, your marker is going to feel dry. You're going to feel a lot of friction and resistance. It's not going to be a pleasant coloring experience. And the edges of the color you put down are not going to be where you expect them to be. You're going to get very spotty, streaky finishes. You're just you're not going to get the, you're not going to get the result you're expecting. If you like coated papers, but you like to work on something thicker, you can get thicker coated papers like Express It Blendin card. That is basically cardstock or Bristol paper, but it also has a coating. Honestly though, if you're going with a thicker paper, there isn't much point in a coating because it's just 
not going to bleed through. So you can simply get smooth bristle. You can simply go to the scrapbooking section of your local craft store and buy basic cardstock. Just make sure it's acid free and you're good to go. Alcohol ink itself is not light fast. Just the nature of the medium alcohol ink cannot be light fast. It's not something you're going to be able to display in direct light for years and years and years and years and never have it change. So don't worry too much about your paper also being completely archival, but for best practices, especially if you're using your paper with multiple mediums, at least go acid free so that the paper isn't the problem when you have things fade and color shift over time. The challenge prompt for the October 2021 Scholar Box is out of the lamp. And I am also fulfilling the Inktober challenge prompt for today, October 27th. And the prompt is spark. So I'm going to draw the genie from Aladdin with some fireworks going on. You probably already got that by now. I've been talking a lot. So opinions on the supplies. These are all supplies I already use. I, I'm not a huge fan of using a putty eraser exclusively. It's something I would normally use just to lighten a sketch if I don't want it to show through, but it's it doesn't replace other erasers because it's really not the eraser you want to use if you're really scrubbing, especially on such a thin paper like this. It's really easy to snag the paper and crease it all up and then you're just you're never getting those creases out of this paper. As for the pen, I know that UniPen is one of my favorite pens out there. This is good to go over with Copic markers or any other alcohol marker. You just have to make sure it's dry first. Generally though, I like to do my lining at the very end. If we had a set of these and I had something much smaller, at least an 01, if not smaller, a 005, a 003, I might actually do initial line work, do my coloring, and then come back and do final line work with a thicker pen. I only have the 03, so we're reserving the line work for the end. If you got this box for real, tell me what you think about it. Was this your first time working with Copics? Was this your first time working with this type of paper? If you didn't get this box, do you wish you got it? Or would you rather just go out and get your own Copics? Copic markers or another brand. It's interesting that they sent three sketch markers and it's interesting that they basically sent the primaries. You can do some color mixing. Really with a medium like alcohol ink, you want to have complementary colors or complete opposite accent colors so that you can make a cohesive piece. In this case, like you're not going to force strong red into canary yellow and expect to just smoothly get a nice red to orange to yellow gradient. You're always going to see where one color stopped and the next one started because they're so drastically different. If you wanted to do a red to yellow blend and have a nice orange transition, you would need an orange marker. You would probably also want some intermediates between the red and the orange and between the orange and the yellow. They can't afford to send us that many markers though, so I get it. I have seen people discussing on Facebook that they preferred the January box that sent the Tombow ABT markers purely because they got two grays and a blue. So they were able to blend the two grays and then use the blue for accents and details. Don't forget to use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox if you are doing this challenge, regardless of which box you're doing. Send me a link if you've made a YouTube video so I can add you to the playlist. If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like Living Life Creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!